what is the religious side of Buddhism? After all, it is categorized as a religion. We can't ignore that entirely. It is fashionable in religious studies to see the history of founders, prophets, as mythical, consider their stories as idealizations, and even question whether they even existed. The Buddha taught that one should question everyone and everything and not accept things blindly following authorities. And the Buddhists started doing that about the Buddha's person, at least from the second century before the common era. There was a famous dialogue between the mendicant Nagasena and the Greco-Bactrian king Menander, or Melinda, as they write in Pali. And Nagasena and Menander asked Nagasena, the monk, the mendicant, well, Nagasena, you never saw the Buddha. You know, this was hundreds of years after Buddha's time. And Buddha told you to question everything. So what makes you think there even was such a person as the Buddha? And Nagasena admitted he couldn't be sure. He admitted maybe there wasn't a Buddha. He says that in second century before the common era. He says, I didn't personally experience the Buddha. I never met him. So, uh, but then he asked the king, he said, well, your majesty, when you go somewhere on travel and you come to a city and you see the city beautifully laid out with uh, avenues and squares and the palace over here and the market over there and this and that, and it's all very well beautifully arranged in geometric patterns. Do you sort of think there was a city designer? And then the, then the, the king Melinda or Menander, he says, well, yes, I would say someone had set it up and it wasn't just higgledy piggledy across the riverbank or something. So then just in that way, your majesty, I think there was some sort of Buddha person because the Dharma is like a city. It's all beautifully well organized. And there's the teachings about the mind and there's the teachings about the real world and there's the teachings about ethics. And they're all neatly arranged just like the marketplace and the, and, the, and the temple and the king's palace and so forth. And therefore, I think there was. But I agree, he might not have ever existed, but the city he built certainly does. So they even, even dealt with it in that way 2,000 years ago, which is the big modern thing. Maybe Jesus never existed or maybe Buddha never existed. So we don't worry about that. So therefore, if religions are, as currently defined, systems of unquestioned creedal beliefs and associated ritual behaviors, Buddhism, quote unquote, is primarily a process of transformative education in scientific wisdom, that's called prajna, in moral and mental capability, that's called shila, and it's only a religion for an associated populations who are circumstantially not yet able to directly undertake such education. And in a way, you could say there's a, even a spiritual, you could say, if not religious component, in one of the factors of education, which is developing a higher level of concentration in your mind, the famous meditation thing, in the sense that you do, like, for example, when you learn French today, you will repeat a sentence, je suis un américain, je suis un américain. You will repeat it 20 times to get used to saying it in French. And that's like meditating. That's what meditating is. It's deepening your familiarity with something by sticking on the one thing in a sort of one-pointed way. And it's really part, it's a tool of education, really. And that's very well taught in this Buddhist education system. And that maybe you could say has a religious component in that it's repeating and deepening a particular idea. But otherwise, it's mainly wisdom and ethics. You know, how to behave, how to be decent, how to restrain your negative impulses. And it's a matter of wisdom, how to understand reality. And reality includes the physical reality, mental reality, social reality, just like we have natural science, social science, and the human sciences of the humanities.